Hi, this is George Miller at the Buffalo Bill Center of the West, and we have some camelids here. Now, camelids are part of a family that have spent a lot of time here in North America, but did, disappeared at the end of the Pleistocene, the last ice age. There are lots of different kinds of camelids. So when you hear the word camelids, you probably think of camels. But llamas are part of the same family. Here's Luna the llama, a camelid. Well, there are lots of different kinds of camelids. The dromedary camel is part of the family, and dromedaries live in the Middle East and South Asia. Here's Magpie walking along. Notice how her legs move on the same side of her body at the same time. That's characteristic of camelids. That's why when people ride larger camels, they seem to sway as they go along. Well, here we are in Clark, Wyoming, northwestern Wyoming, where camelids once lived, as I said. At the end of the Pleistocene, they disappeared. Some managed to make it over the land bridge into Asia, and others, when the Isthmus of Panama closed, made it into South America. Here's a dromedary. There's a wild dromedary and a domesticated dromedary camel in Asia. This is Mr. Crow. We call him Crow because he has four black feet. Notice how he is cushed down. Cush means to sit down on your legs, so they fold their legs underneath them. You know, my llamas spend a lot of time in very cold weather in the wintertime. They don't seem to mind at all. Part of that is because they have that thick fur and they can sit right on their legs. Well, here's Mr. T. He's large and in charge. Mr. T seems to be the head llama. Llamas are constantly jostling for position. They have a very defined hierarchy, but they're always changing leaders. So Mr. T seems to be the leader right now. Mr. T, you can see, has those big ears that face forward when they're happy, and when they're not happy, you'll see the ears go back. They also have that thick fur, and as you can see, they really can stay warm here in Wyoming in the winter. Now their feet are interesting because they have pads that they walk on and two large toenails. Those toenails almost look like claws, and they use them to defend themselves from predators in the wild. They'll kick with those large toenails. So there are different kinds of camelids. Um, even in South America, the llama and the vicuña are um, closely related. So vicuña is the wild species, llama is the domesticated species. And I'll show you a picture of a vicuña in just a, a guanaco. Excuse me, I made a mistake. The guanaco. There it is, the guanaco. That's like the llama predecessor. Well, here's curry. Look at curry. Here he is eating. They have three stomachs and they chew the cud. So they're an amazing animal and very efficient at processing all kinds of grain. Here Curry's getting some grass hay. They can't eat alfalfa hay because it's too rich for them. Well, here's a uh, vicuña and a alpaca. So alpaca are much smaller than llamas. Alpacas are domesticated. Vicuñas are the wild variety. Well, we're going to say goodbye now, but T and or Luna and Maggie are going to get together here. Isn't she beautiful? Ooh. Thank you. Bye-bye.